Praise the Lord. Today's message is entitled, Get Across. Get Across. And I'm going to pray and then I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Father, we're looking to Jesus this morning, the master evangelist, to teach us how to be evangelists, how to be spreaders of the good news. I'm asking that you speak to us, give me grace to share your word, and let your word equip us and challenge us to be more like Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. If you could put your hands on your hearts and pray this with conviction. Dear Jesus, speak to my heart and change my life in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So let's get into this. Get across. This is a famous bridge in New York called the Verrazano Bridge. The Verrazano Bridge. And I'll talk about this bridge for a moment. Here's another perspective of the Verrazano Bridge. The Verrazano Bridge is one of the critical bridges in New York City's infrastructure. It connects Brooklyn to Staten Island. And since most of my family lived in either Brooklyn or Staten Island, it kept our family connected. And so we were often crossing that bridge. And I re remember uh, how intimidating the bridge looked when we crossed it. And I'll explain why. The Verrazano is a massive double-decker suspension bridge stretching over four kilometers. It stretches over four kilometers long and contains 13 lanes. Seven on top and six on the bottom. And I remember when I was young, I was scared to cross it. It meant going into the unknown. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're young, you're thinking, is this the bridge going to, like, collapse or fall down? Now, this bridge is over four kilometers long. Our, the gateway bridge here is quite big. That is around... 1.5 kilometers, a little bit over 1.5 kilometers. So this bridge, when you come to it, is, is massive. And technically, it connects Long Island with Staten Island. It begins in Brooklyn and goes over to Staten Island. And you'll see it in many movies, but there's many bridges. There's many bridges in New York. There's the Brooklyn Bridge. This is not the Brooklyn Bridge. The Bro Brooklyn bridge is a bit smaller. This is uh, another one of the bridges uh, of the many bridges, but one of the ones that we often traveled on as a family as we would visit, visit our family. And uh, we did that often. Thanksgiving is coming up, the American holiday Thanksgiving. And uh, Thanksgiving is uh, where you thank God. <laughs> it's about thanking God. And in thank during Thanksgiving, families come together and they celebrate. Usually, eat a big meal, turkey meal. You know about that. <laughs> and the turkey meat makes you sleepy. You have your meal like at about one or two in the afternoon. Big meal. Then everybody gets tired, takes a nap, watches football. <laughs> Next Thanksgiving. And if you have a heart after God, you're thanking God for all of his blessings. Well, this brings us to the story of the woman at the well. Today, we'll continue to learn from the master himself about how to share the good news. To begin, we'll see that Jesus crossed a major cultural bridge to speak to the Samaritan woman. Though intimidating, we must follow in his footsteps. So let's pick up, pick, uh, pick up where we left off last week. And we're looking now at John 4, 7. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, 
Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan. Uh, I am a Samaritan woman. <laughs> How can you ask me for a drink? But Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Let's talk about this. And again, we're learning from the master himself how to share the good news. So my first point today, and it carries on with what we were talking about last week. My first point today is get across. Let's all say that together. Get across. Get across. Don't let cultural boundaries stop you. John 4, 7 through 9. Don't let cultural boundaries stop you. Now notice what she said there. This, Jesus asked for a drink. Will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Now, culturally, they did not associate together. And that's one of the things that John lets us know, the writer of this gospel. He says, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Of course, the Samaritans in the, in the past did not treat the Jews well. They attacked them, killed them. They were involved in idolatry. They said they worshipped Yahweh, but they also worshipped other idols. And so the Jews had a historic grudge. The Jews had a historic grudge with the Samaritans. And so they didn't associate with them. But Jesus crossed. He crossed that boundary. He crossed that bridge. Getting across takes trust. Because we're taught from a young age not to cross boundaries. Now when it comes to God's word, we're not meant to cross the boundaries of God's word. Don't cross the boundaries of God's word. God says do not steal, don't steal. God says do not commit adultery, do not commit adultery. He tells us many things we need to stay, as Lillian said in her uh, message to us, she said, stay in the red flags, which in Australia, that means stay in the safe zone to swim. Some people listen to this in, in other places. And the red flags, if you go to the beach and the red flags are planted there, that's the safe place to swim. That's where it's patrolled. If you actually go out of that, you can get caught in a drift and you can die. And there has been too many people that have died in that way. So with regards to God's word, we need to stay in the boundaries of what God says. But with regards to artificial boundaries, uh, man-made boundaries, boundaries of culture, uh, we're taught, you know, don't cross over, it's dangerous. Don't go to the other side of the tracks. Now when I was young, and this in New York, it's quite different. Uh, then in some other places, I just, uh, with my friends, we were sitting there. What are we going to do tonight? Hey, let's cross over to the next street. You don't cross over to the next street. There was a little stream, a tiny stream, and that divided our side from their side. And really, it was just one street away. You're talking about closer than from here to that street over there, or closer from here to that street there. It was that close. But we said, oh, let's go over to the other side. And so we crossed over and another gang of kids found us. And then they called their friends. And uh, soon we were surrounded. Because I, I wasn't big like I am now. Uh, I was a small, skinny twerp. <laughs> and so I was trying to stay out of the fight. I had my back turned, but they chose me to be the first one that they clobbered on the head. And so then I was on the floor, and a big rumble uh, erupted, 
and I got kicked in the head. Every time I tried to get up, they kicked me in the head. I got kicked in the head about 20 times. I saw flashes of light, and I was feeling like I was fighting for my life. Finally, somehow, I got up, and I don't even know how I got up after getting kicked in the head so many times. Finally, I got up, and I ran for my life, and I got to safety. Now, the, the guys in our group that were strong, I had one, uh, one friend, and he, he's still my friend. He bench presses. About, back then, he would bench press like 300 pounds, and he was a strong guy. The other guy was a black belt in karate, and they got beat so severely that they were hospitalized. So it was that, uh, and, you know, really, really damaged. So it was that type of violence and intensity all because we crossed just a little over the stream, crossed to the other side. So, crossing to the other side could be, can be dangerous, and so we're, uh, we're careful uh, in our human nature. We also feel more comfortable with our own kind. So, with no matter, I mean, Americans feel comfortable with Americans, uh, Chinese feel comfortable with Chinese, Australians feel comfortable with Australians, Islanders feel comfortable with Islanders, Aboriginals with Aboriginals. It's something, Italians with Italians, it's Jews with Jews, it's something in human nature that we feel comfortable and safer with our own kind. And the same thing went with Jesus. But you see, he crosses the boundaries. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans, except he does something different. And so, to be an evangelist like Jesus, we need to be willing to take risks, led by the Holy Spirit, to take risks and get out of our comfort zone and circle and follow Jesus. The woman was surprised that Jesus was even talking to her. And like I read a few times, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. John 4, 9. And here's something I shared last week. Get a acrostic for get. God empowers trust. So wherever God sees trust, he empowers the one who trusts in him. It takes trust to cross that bridge. It takes trust to get out of our own normal circle that we're used to. But wherever you find trust, true trust in God, you'll find God empowers the trust. And so let's be those who trust in God just like Jesus trusted his father and though it looked a bit strange to people even the the disciples were taken back when they came back um, what, what is what is he doing why is he uh, speaking to this woman they were taken back they were surprised uh, in verse 27 you'll see this John 4 27 just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. And this is the thing about being with Jesus and being like Jesus and having Jesus minister through you. It will surprise people because you will do surprising things. Now, I'm not talking about doing stupid, foolish, sinful things. Uh, there are people who say that and they say, oh, Jesus told me. Uh, <laughs> don't make that excuse. But if Jesus is living in you, operating through you, there will be surprising things that he does because he will cross boundaries that, and boundaries that we have artificially erected. And here's, here's a map of Israel back then. You'll see uh, Judea in the south, and that's where Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is underlined, if you can see it there. But then the middle section is Samaria, and it's in Sakar, 
that this is happening, the woman at the well, that's where uh, it's most likely where this event is happening between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. And Jesus, in order to get home, because he lives in the Galilee, that's their home. You see that lake there, the Sea of Galilee up there. It's around there that they're, they are uh, going to. He has to go through Samaria to go through Judea. Now, there is something where uh, uh, a lot of uh, commentaries have said that there was an alternative route road that they could have skipped Samaria. Um, uh, but l lately, that has been contested. Uh, so the, the idea in the past, and you may have heard it, is Jesus didn't actually have to go to Samaria. He, he, he could have went down a special, he could have went through a special road to skip that area and then get home. Uh, but he chose to go that way. But there is some, there is some scholarly debate about whether that road was actually there during that time. So I just take what the scripture is saying here literally it said he had to go through the area now he had to go through Samaria verse 4 so he had to go through Samaria to get <laughs> where he's going so I'm just gonna take that literally some people said well he had to go because he knew about the woman being there we don't know all of those details but we know he had to go through Jesus evangelists are more concerned about human souls than artificial traditions and grudges. Can I hear an amen? amen. Is that sick? Yeah, that's good. It's sunk in. I like that amen. Sounded hearty. <laughs> Jesus evangelists are more concerned about human souls than artificial traditions and grudges. Despite how people judge them, they will ensure they get across barriers to give people spiritual life-giving water. And that is what evangelism is. If you have a cup of, of water, cold, cool water, that's the message of the gospel. And you're giving it to somebody. And if they drink it, it will refresh them and turn into a well of living water. Uh, Jesus said, indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So here I'm going to make evangelism quite simple for us. So then we don't get, this is my water I just got over there. It's cool, you know, there's a little fountain over there with cold water. That was refreshing. Okay, you've tasted of the gospel, right? You've experienced the refreshing of Jesus Christ. That's good. Now, okay, good. This is before COVID now. <laughs> you tasted it. <laughs> You're refreshed by it. And now you want to give it. I, I, I want to share this with you. And uh, you pretend there's no germs here, right? <laughs> but you don't have to drink it, but you, you take hold of it. And what, ev what evangelism is, is you're sharing the living water that you have experienced and has blessed you and you're sharing it with somebody else. And then they take it and they are refreshed by it. And you're willing to cross boundaries to do it. Yeah. Let me go to somebody in the park now. <laughs> but you're willing to get outside of what you're normally used to. And that's, that's evangelism. Simplify. And despite it, people will be surprised by some of the ones you talk to. And you may think, well, that person, he's not worthy to receive it. Like last week, I told the story of the guy who came to my house with a, with a gun, young, young man who was a DJ, and he was DJing with me. And Anna said, was it, was it true? Did he have a gun? And was he really going to do the hit? And from all I know, this was true. It wasn't just a guy bragging. This, this, is, this is the streets I'm talking about. The streets of New York and the tougher, tougher areas of Long Island where you get gangs like the MS-13 and uh, 
Do you know about the MS-13? Yeah. Well, last time we went to New York, they said if anybody bumps you, if, you get, if you're in a car and anybody bumps you in the back, do not go, go out of your car and do not exchange details. There's a new gang initiation with the MS-13. And what they do is they bang your car. When you get out, then they shoot you and they kill you. And that's how they're initiated into the gang. And many people had died that way. And so when Trump came into uh, his presidency, he made it one of his aims to try to get rid of this gang, uh, which had a very uh, bad reputation. But we're talking about, this is, you know, tough, tough places. And here, you know, you even look uh, in Australia, every time I'm turning on the news, you find someone's die. They say there's no guns in Australia. Every time I turn on the news, someone's getting shot, killed, police. So uh, police getting uh, held up, shot, all sorts of things. So even Australia is getting more and more dangerous. That's why we need to pray and we need to reach these people because this person that had, say, say a person is going to shoot another person, if you lead them to the Lord, then you save their life and they're not going to be doing that stuff anymore. <laughs> so what's, what's the true solution? We have laws and regular, let's have tougher laws and let's get, we got rid of the guns. Hey, the guns are still here, right? We, we have laws and we quote unquote got rid of the guns, um, but the guns are on the streets. The laws are not fully helping, but I, I sure believe in the law, but I don't believe in it as much as I believe in the gospel, the good news. Because the law just changes people's behavior outwardly to some degree. It puts some restraint on, but not full, fully. But the gospel changes someone from the inside out. It changes their heart. So they do not want to murder anymore. They do not want to be violent anymore. They're changed. So someone you lead to the Lord, you could save. Not only are you saving that person's life, you're saving all the people that they may have uh, hurt. Whether it be in some really demonstrative violence or just the, the violence of the tongue. And so this is the power of the good news. And for any society, we, we thank God for the law, but the law is not the ultimate solution. The only ultimate solution is the changing of the heart. The changing of the heart that happens through the good news. Moving forward. So we talked about get across. Now, the next point is get connected. Get connected. Find common ground. Find common ground. So John chapter 4, verse 10. The next verse after, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So get connected. What do I mean by get connected here? No matter what background or ethnicity you are, everybody needs water. 
And Jesus found the common ground between the woman and him. And it all had to do with water. They had so many cultural differences, Jews and Samaritans, even though they lived close to one another. So many differences. But Jesus found the common ground. And that was water. We all need water. And through the well, Jesus connected with her. So Jesus sat at that well and through that well connected with her talking about water but talking about an earthly thing and think like a bridge connecting it to the heavenly water the water that comes from God the water that is the water of the kingdom I mean, you can hear that everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but it, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst that living water Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So f here we learn something about being an evangelist, sharing the good, new good news. And we're all called to be evangelists. We're all called to share the good news. There's a soccer field there. <laughs> Because when I when I was younger, I played a lot of I played a lot of soccer when I was younger. Because my dad, I, you might have heard the story. My dad was a soccer coach, and so we were always on the soccer field. And I spent the, my summers at different soccer camps. Now, when you're reaching out, look for ways to connect and similarities between you and the other person. So what are the similarities between you and the person you're speaking to? It could be anything from sports to cooking. But find some type of common ground where you can become friends. And I was reading something from C.S. Lewis this morning, where in his book on four loves, he talks about friendship begins when two people when one person says you too like they have an experience and the other person can relate to that experience and they say you too you too and then there's a common ground and this is how friendship develops and our goal in sharing the faith is first to become friends with the person now when you become friends then they're more uh, they're more open to receiving from you so it's not to kind of throw the gospel down their throat it's not to try to sell it to them it's to become friends and to find that commonality between us the goal is to make a friend and then introduce them to the friend that sticks closer than a brother do you know that verse that's a beautiful verse uh, Proverbs 18 24 the friend that sticks closer than a brother. I'm going to turn there. How are you going? Proverbs 18, 24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Did you hear that? That's Jesus. And our job is to be friends with those who need Jesus and introduce them to Jesus one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother so find find ways where you can connect there's a uh, the turntables that I had when I DJed back in New York I also, you know, I sell candy at school, um, and that get actual candy, not drugs. Okay, <laughs> Snickers bars and stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I would earn money, and then I'd go out and buy records, and I, I had a needle, uh, a needle just like that. It cost me a lot of money for that special needle, and I wouldn't have bought that, and. That was a big part of my life. One of the ways I connect, as a personal example, one of the ways I connect with people is through music. 
I may tell someone my story and background to get a conversation started. So how can you share your faith? You really need to know a little bit about yourself and your story, and where you come from and your interests, and then try to also broaden your interests so you can connect with more and more people. But uh, at one time, I didn't use music to connect with people. I had come up in my mind that, oh, that was the old life, and I have burnt that. Uh, down, and I have burnt that bridge, and I'm never going to go over that bridge again. But the Holy Spirit taught me something else. He taught me to use the music and my story to uh, connect with people and to glorify God. So that was the, the journey that the Holy Spirit brought me on. In my early days as a Christian, I ran from music thinking it was all unclean, except the most sacred of hymns. But now I see music as a language to communicate and connect. Now I'm not saying all music is good. Some music is like really polluted water, and you drink it and you're really going to get sick. Um, I can think of some of the latest Sam Smith songs and things of, of that nature. And you drink that and it's going to make you sick and, and uh, really pollute you. But not, I'm not uh, endorsing that at all, but I want, I want you to see there is a lot of music that is, communicates something. And someone may not listen to my preaching, but they may listen to one of my DJ mixes on my, my story. So I've got this, I wish Davina was asking before, I have a, a podcast, it's called House of Soul. It's H-A-U-S, like my last name, H-A-U-S, and then, uh, and then of, and then soul is S-O-L, which stands for Sounds of Life. And I have, This is from my. This is uh, from my mix, my latest mix show, and it's talking about that song is talking about the grace of God, so if you, and how God's grace feels so good. Um, but uh, you you might not know it unless you really listen to the lyrics. <laughs> One time somebody sent me something and said I was about to commit suicide, but I listened to your mix and I felt that there was hope and there was life. Um, and, and of course they didn't commit suicide, so I was, and I didn't know who this person was. They were from somewhere else in the, the world. So that's one of the ways that's not the only way but one of the ways that i use to connect with people especially people who don't do not know know the lord now this is a some of you may have seen this before that's a little book that i wrote in sync and this is part one your life resonating with god but in this book, I talk about my story, my story as a DJ and how Jesus saved me and how someone can get in sync with God. Because in sync, the idea is you have two tracks, you're playing them and you want them to be in sync with one another uh, as you transition from one track to another. And so I talk about that in this book. So I, I made this so that I could give it to pe people. And the other day, there was a guy working on the air conditioning in our office, uh, our headquarters, and it was Anna's day that she was in the city, and she met with the guy, got to talk with him. You were able to give him this book, and Anna was able to give this book to share with him about Jesus, and then he could take it, and then we pray, we pray God speak to them. Um, speak to them through it. So you can do something similar while you may not write a book. You can write a little pamphlet, a little track about your story, 
uh, you can uh, make up, like Diane makes up these bookmarks that she gives to people. And uh, I don't know if Diane, if you do this, but you could, I was thinking you can make a business card with your blog address on it. And then you can give that out and then people can then connect with your blog through the uh, business card. I don't know if you do that, but that was an idea that came to me as I was thinking this week. But as a community, we should always be thinking and talking about how can we reach more people? What can I do? And challenge one another and stir one another. Because we tend to get complacent about our faith, right? We, and not crossing, staying where we are, not crossing the bridge, not connecting. We're comfortable with our friends. We get comfortable with our church. And it's good to be comfortable with your church. It's good to have some comforting relationships, right? And, but then from there, we need to use that base and that home to take risks, and reach out and cross boundaries and talk to one another about, you know, and challenge one another about sharing our faith in different ways and creative ways we can do it. And this is the last point for today. Get creative. Get creative. First thing we read about God <laughs> is what? In the beginning, God created. And if God is living in us, He still wants to create. And He creates uniquely through each person. Everybody, it's something, something unique, something different. Help people engage with God's Word. And that's what Jesus was doing when He was speaking to the Samaritan woman. He was helping her engage with the word. And I'll read this part again. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? As did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. And we'll stop at that point. In, in the, the future, we'll go a little bit further in weeks to come. But notice how Jesus gets her thirsty for the living water, for God's living water. She wants that water. Um, and she's not fully understanding, though, at first, that he's talking about a, a, a higher water, a greater water, uh, a water that is, he, she's, she is thinking about like some type of fountain of life that people say, oh, if you drink this water, you'll be healed and perfect. Some natural water, um, natural spring. She's not understanding that he's speaking of himself and the Holy Spirit and eternal life that God gives. But he uses that, he uses that analogy, that creative analogy to connect. Jesus used creativity to help the Samaritan woman engage with the truth. Jesus' creativity got the woman thirsty for God's eternal and living water. That's why, sir, give me this water. What, what creative means can you use to get someone thirsty for the kingdom? I want you to think about this now. Think about it throughout the week. What creative means can you use to get someone thirsty for the kingdom. And it will be something different for each person, but there may be also things that in your life that are go-to go -to ways. And so I, oh, Charles Mingus, he's a jazz bassist, said this, anyone can make the simple complicated. Creativity is making the complicated simple. 
and say that again. Anyone can make the simple complicated. Creativity is making the complicated simple. And this is what you want to do as you share your faith. And I, I wrote this, and you'll be able to get this at brisbanefire.com. You go to the Inspiration Online store. I did this one about a year ago. It's in a packet of a few things, but I'm going to make it available on the st store so you can download it if you don't have it. And this is how to share the good news create creatively. How to share the good news creatively. A few ideas to get you started. Now, I'm not going to fully go through this. I went through this before, but just rapid fire. You can write. Write your own story or write a story. It doesn't have to be non-fiction. It can be a fiction story. Like we watched this uh, thing yesterday with Valerie, and Valerie was saying, oh, this is such a great movie. It was called, what is it called? The, Medall the Lost Medallion. The Lost Medallion. And it uses fiction to share the good news in a very kind of exciting, exciting way. It's an adventure story. So write, craft. You can design something. Bake and cook. And I've seen Anna do this often. We'll have something uh, we, we cook. We cook a bit more, and then she'll bring it over to the neighbors. And Allie does this too. She'll have some more flowers, and she brings it over to the neighbors and shares it with them. And in doing that, you are showing people you love them, you care about them. Can I can I put you put you on here? And it's not always that you have to share every single point of the gospel. Uh, you're sharing a seed. You're sharing like. Anna said there, that's God caring for you. This is a, a small way of bringing the good news of who God is to people. Here's another uh, creative way. Be excellent. So in your job, you do things with excellence. Whatever you do, you do things with excellence. And excellence is a, a testimony. I, I heard a quote from Martin Luther. You may have heard this before. A Christian shoemaker does not prove that he's Christian by putting a cross on the shoe. He proves he's Christian by making a very good quality shoe. That's my paraphrase. So you do things with excellence and then people ask you, hey, why are you different? You have an opportunity to share the hope that you have. Uh, create you can create art and art can trigger a conversation you can play music like I talked about using music and then here's here's a novel idea though I know all of you are practicing this here's a novel act kind act kind I've seen so many evangelists because I've been with a lot of evangelists I've been on the streets I know how they think and different things and sadly, all of them thought that they had come across really rough. And maybe some of that is because you're trying to overcome the fear of just getting out on the streets, right? You just, it's, not, it's not easy to cross that bridge. And so by the time you get across the bridge, and it's so long, you're tired, you're haggard, you're upset, and <laughs> you're yelling at everybody. Maybe, maybe that's part of the reason. I'm just uh, thinking out loud here. But act kind. Kindness. Kindness uh, draws people. And kindness is a testimony to them. Oh, this is my Colossians is out now. The online store. You can get that. Inspiration Fire online store. And one of the things that my goal was in this Colossians, the mystery, the inspiration translation was bringing in art and make, designing it in an artistic way so that people can engage with God's word. Uh, 
Hallelujah. And if you can please pray, please pray for that project. I had one, I had an, my copy, my, uh, my original copy of it, the computer corrupted the file and left every paragraph that left out about 15 different characters, like the C's or the, the F's or the O's or the apostrophes. So now I have to go back and the one online that is, is, is uh, perfect, but I had an updated version uh, fixing some some things, not that type of thing, and it had garbled the the, the whole book, so the printed one has taken a little bit longer to get out. But if you can pray with me that God uses it, uh, everything that happened alerts me that we need some more need some more prayer for that. So please pray for that. But you can also get a PDF copy there the Inspiration Fire online store. And every time that is updated, it's a free, it'll tell you by email, and it's a free download for all the latest updates of the translation. And let me say, Lena, you did an excellent job with your assignment at school, engaging with Colossians. Vanessa, you did an excellent job, hallelujah. I, I appreciate Barbara's leadership. She leads by example, the, and she's there for the young woman. So thank you, Barbara. Hallelujah. And we're coming, coming to the home stretch of the Bible school ending soon. So I'm going to pray now, and yeah, then we'll, we'll go from there. Father, I want to thank you for... for the good news and who Jesus is to us, that Jesus is the gift of God and that you have called us to share this gift and you're equipping us to share this gift. Help us, Lord, to not just put this message on the shelf, but to use creative ways to share the good news and give each person here creative ideas for their life, but also in that moment where they're talking with somebody to know what to say. Like Jesus spoke, each person he spoke a little bit differently to. But to know the right words for the right situation by the power of the Holy Spirit. May we be those who evangelize and through our lives, I'm asking Father that you would multiply your kingdom in Brisbane, in our community, and who's ever listening to this, that through them you would multiply your kingdom, your word, your works. Give them the courage. Give us all the courage to cross the bridges, to connect, and also be creative. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Amen. Amen, guys.